Now let's first get some clues about how to add two bits by combining transistors. Roughly speaking, no electricity could mean low voltage. So naturally, if we don't do anything special, these four wires can stay at low voltage because there is no electricity, as if it naturally knows two zeros add up to zero. The easiest one to build is one plus one equals to two. You just need to turn on the second wire when both inputs are high voltages. To turn it on, we need power line. Connect it to the power line; it will be turned on. But then it will always be on. You want it to be turned on according to inputs. That's why you want to connect the power line through transistors. So we need two transistors, each taking an input. You connect the two transistors to each other, then the power line. Putting the sandwich structure here to see clearly what's going on. This serial connection makes sure that electricity only flows when both inputs are high voltages. Then, if we draw a little electricity from here, hopefully the second wire would be turned on. So we are able to get one plus one equals to two. It's also not difficult to add a zero and one. You simply need to turn on the first wire as long as one input is high voltage. So we again need two transistors and a power line, each one taking an input. I'm using the dot here to mean that these two wires are welded together. Unlike here, they're not connected. What's interesting is how we connect the transistor to the power line. Each individual input should be able to turn on the wire independently, so you connect each transistor independently to the power line, bypassing the other. Weld another wire to the power line and connect the other transistor. Finally, connect the power line to the first output wire. Using the sandwich to see things clearly, now each input voltage is able to turn on one transistor. Electricity will flow, turning on the wire. It doesn't matter which input is high, because there are two ways for the electricity to go. So we have one plus zero equals to one. But we have a problem. When both inputs are high voltages, this bottom pair will also have electricity flow. Turning on the second wire, as if it is saying that one plus one equals to three, so we no longer get one plus one computes correctly. To proceed, we need some electricity knowledge. First, we need to know more about power supply. Electrons are everywhere, but if the population are the same along the wire, they won't flow. But if you create an imbalance on two sides. They will flow from the surplus side to the shortage side, creating electrical current. This electron imbalance corresponds to voltage most of us are familiar with. So a power supply typically provides you that electron imbalance, like this plus five volts Apple charger. It provides one wire with electron shortage, and another wire with electron surplus. If you connect the two sides through a bulb. Electrons filling the imbalance are going to flow, lightening the bulb. Because electrons have negative charges, the shortage side will measure high voltage, and the surplus side will measure low voltage, because you have more negative charges. If you connect the two through a serial pair of transistors, you are applying a plus five volts across the pair. Typically, this low voltage end is connected to earth. We are going to use three bars to represent it, called Ground. Now we update our diagram to reflect ground here as low voltage end. The output wires are connected to ground, so that all four wires start at low voltage. If we strike both inputs with high voltages, transistors will be conducting. Electrons filling the imbalance can move upwards, but when transistors become conducting, they are perfect conductors, just like wires, with nothing to slow down the electrons. Electrons will swamp, burning the circuits. Hence, we need some resistance, a resistor. This is one type of resistor made of carbon. They can slow down the electrons. The zigzag symbol is used to represent a resistor. But how should we place it to the circuits here, up or down, below the output point or above it? The differences are significant. 
Let me explain. When electrons are moving through conductors without resistance, electron population will be roughly the same along the wire. Just like when cars are moving without any congestions, the number of cars will be the same along the road. But if you add traffic control to the car flow, we will see more cars on the side going into this control as compared to coming out of it. Resistor acts like traffic control, so there would be more electrons on the entry side as compared to the exit side. If we measure the voltage, the shortage side is going to show high voltage. The surplus side will show low voltage because the electrons have negative charges. The more negative charges you have, the lower the voltage. If we place the resistors close to the ground and below the output point, the output wires will still be low if two inputs are low voltages, because resistors won't do anything if no electrons are flowing. But when the transistors are conducting, electrons flowing. Now there would be more electrons on the entry side, fewer on the exit side. So both wires will be turned on now because they are connected to the shortage side. So now our circuit won't burn when electricity flows, and is able to compute these three cases correctly. So the next task is to turn off the first wire when we are adding one plus one. We need another pair connected to each other, checking two inputs, turning off wire when both inputs are high voltages. How can we get it to turn something off when electrons are flowing? If we place the resistor above the transistor, an output from just below, then naturally it will be at high voltage because it's connected directly to the high voltage end. But then, when both inputs are high voltages, both transistors will be conducting, electrons will flow upwards. But because of the resistor here, there will be more electron below as compared to up. So the output here will become low because it's closer to the low voltage end. Now let's think about how to connect these two pairs to the output wire. We need to connect this parallel setup to the first wire. It will try to turn it on when at least one of the input is high voltage. Then we need to connect this serial setup to exclude the case of one plus one. These two wires are given different orders, so they can't be connected directly to the final output. We need another layer of transistors, another serial pair with a resistor below, taking two temporary outputs, and connect to the final output wire. Now, when two inputs are high, the middle pair. We'll turn on the bottom output transistor, confirming that at least one input is high. But this pair will turn off the top output transistor, hence turning off the first wire, eliminating the case of one plus one. So we're able to compute one plus one correctly now. When only one input is high, the second wire will be turned off by the lower pair of gates. While the upper pair will shut off current flow, switching the output gate into conduction, hence turning on the first wire. Now, with a thorough understanding of how computers compute, let's see if we can answer the previous questions better. We have the illusion that any number bases and symbols can be used to represent numbers, because most cases we're dealing with human computers. They can be trained to memorize any symbols at computing tables as we like, but computing is not automatic because humans need to flip those basic symbols according to the table. To get the computing device to auto switch those symbols without human intervention, electricity is used as numbers because they can trigger the computing device to auto switch, and we have to use binary number system. Because the computing device can only understand two electrical inputs, a high and low voltage. These voltage numbers are active, switching transistors on off, allowing electricity to flow, flipping the output into high or low voltages. That's why in the computer world, switching is computing. 
Now, using symbols to represent those different transistor connections, we can simplify the diagram a bit. AND gate for the serial connection used to turn on the second next step. NAND gate for serial connection to turn off the next step. OR gate for the parallel connection to turn on the next step. Another AND gate to exclude 1 plus 1. Note that power supply are usually omitted when we use these symbols. They are called logic gates. With the fourth one, parallel structure, but with an output from above, a NOR gate. They are at the heart of digital circuits, and we will use them again and again in the future sections. The little complex structure here is called XOR gate, exclusive OR. You can think of the AND gate here responsible for 1 plus 1. The XOR gate for 1 plus 0. It's called a half adder. It can be used to add the first two bits of a multi-bits addition. To add the middle bits, we need a full adder, taking also the carry in besides the two inputs. Let's see how to make a full adder. Take a middle position with possible carry in and carry out, for example. To add these two bits, we need a half adder, splitting out two bits, one for the current bit, one as carry out for the next bit. We also have a carry in, so we need another half adder to add these two lower bits. At most, one of these two half adders will have a carry out one. That's why we need to decide which one is going to be the final carryout. We're going to see that shortly. Let's build the circuits now. Two input wires go through the first half adder, producing two outputs, the first bit and the carryout. Now this first bit is going to be fed to a second half adder to be added to the carry-in, producing the carryout and also the result for the first bit. It also needs to produce a final carry out bit for the next step. At most, one of the half adder will have a carry out. That's why we need an OR gate to allow either this or this to output. It's called a full adder. To add 8 bit numbers A and B, we need a full adder, taking two inputs, the carry in, producing the result, and the carry out. Each carry out is the carry in for the next one, so we need to assemble several of them together. We have 8 bits outputs and a carry out. Two inputs will be in two sets of wires, and we simply connect them one by one. This is the symbol for the 8 bit adder. To add two numbers, convert them to binaries and then voltages. Feed them through the adders. Here comes the result. Building the adder is the hardest it can get for computing circuits. If you need to subtract two numbers, there is a trick called two complement method that's using the adder to do subtraction. Multiplication would be way easier in the binary world. No multiplication table is needed. All you need is to check each bit of the multiplier. If it's 1, store a copy of the multiplicand. If it's 0, skip it check the next bit, but remember to store a shifted copy if you have skipped. In the end, add them up using the adders. To do that, there are several more pieces to be built, like the shifter, memory to store all those copies, CPU clock to coordinate all these steps. After all the pieces are built properly, we need programming to move electricity around in sequence. They will be addressed in the future videos. If you like to see more, please subscribe.